Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 11. When 4 ampere current flows for 2 minutes in an electroplating experiment, then m grams of silver is deposited. Then the amount in grams of silver deposited by 6 ampere current flowing for 40 seconds is. Okay, so again here we have two scenarios. So in case 1, it says that The time for which the current flows is 2 minutes and how much current flows? The current that flows is 4 amperes that is case 1. Now we know that electrochemical equivalent of any substance is equal to the mass deposited per unit charge flowing that is m divided by it. So in this case m we do not know how much mass was deposited that we do not know that is given as m so m divided by i is 4 and t is 2 so 2 minutes when converted to seconds will be 2 into 60 that is 120 seconds so 4 into 120 that is case 1 now what about case 2 so in case 2 the time is 40 seconds and the current that is applied is 6 ampere so therefore in case 2 ECE or electrochemical equivalent will be equal to M dash because this time we do not know the amount of silver that is getting deposited. So M dash divided by I into T right but in both the cases the value of electrochemical equivalent of silver will remain the same that will not change right because every metal will have its own standard value of electrochemical equivalent. So therefore we can say that m divided by 4 into 120 is equal to m dash divided by 6 into 40 or we can say m dash is equal to m divided by 4 into 120 into 6 into 40. So 4 into 10, 6 to the 12, 10 to the 20. So m dash is equal to m by 2. So the correct option is B. Question number 12. The resistances of the four arms P, Q, R, S in a wheatstone bridge are 10 ohms, 30 ohms, 30 ohms and 90 ohms respectively. The EMF and internal resistance of the cell are 7 ohms and 7 volts and 5 ohms respectively. If the galvanometer resistance is 50 ohms, then the current drawn from the cell will be. Okay, so reading the question it is like tough so instead of that let's draw the diagram so first we will draw the wheat stone bridge so this is how the wheat stone bridge will look like so it has resistances 10 ohms 30 ohms 30 ohms and 90 ohms respectively okay and you have a galvanometer here perfect okay now the emf and internal resistance of the cell Okay, so let us connect it to a cell. So this is the cell and the EMF is 7 volts and the internal resistance is 5 ohms. Now the resistance of the galvanometer is 50 ohms. So that means this galvanometer has a resistance of 50 ohms. So the current drawn from the cell would be, so how much current is drawn from the cell? So in order to find out the current that is drawn from the cell, we first need to calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So if you look at this Wheatstone bridge, P by Q, that is 10 by 30, is equal to 30 by 90. Right, so we see that P by Q is equal to R by S which is equal to 1 by 3. So therefore this is a balanced wheat stone bridge. And what happens in a balanced wheat stone bridge? There is no current passing through the galvanometer. So basically this 50 ohm resistance of the galvanometer doesn't play any role. There is no current passing through the galvanometer. Perfect. So how do we calculate R equivalent now? So these two resistances are in series. So they get added up and they make 40 ohms. Similarly, these two resistances are again in series. So they also get added up and they make 120 ohms. Now when you want to calculate equivalent resistance, this 40 ohms and this 120 ohms, they are in parallel. So therefore 1 by R equivalent is equal to 
1 by 40 plus 1 by 120. So this is equal to 3 plus 1 by 120 which is equal to 4 by 120 or you can say R equivalent is equal to 30 ohms. So this is the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Perfect. Now let us talk about the overall circuit. So aren't we missing anything? So this R equivalent is just the equivalent resistance of this part. What about the internal resistance of the cell? That also needs to be considered. Now when we are talking about the overall circuit. So let's now talk about the overall circuit. So what happens the net resistance of the circuit would be equal to R equivalent plus the internal resistance that is 30 ohms plus 5 ohms which is equal to 35 ohms. So therefore the current drawn from the cell would be equal to V divided by R net. So V is equal to 7 volts divided by R net is 35 ohms. So this is equal to 1 by 5 ampere which is equal to 0 0.2 amperes. So B is the right option. Question number 13. Masses of 3 wires of copper are in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5 and their lengths are in the ratio 5 is to 3 is to 1. The ratio of their electrical resistances is. So we have learned that resistance is equal to rho L by A. That means resistance is directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So here we have masses and lengths ratio. So we have to see how is resistance dependent on mass and length. So what is area? So we can also write area in terms of volume. Volume is equal to area into length. Right. So therefore, area can be written as volume per unit length. So therefore, instead of area, you can write it as volume per unit length. So resistance is equal to rho L square by V. Now what is volume? Volume is equal to mass. So de okay, not volume, but we will say density is equal to mass by volume. So let's denote density by D. So therefore we can write volume is equal to mass per unit density. So this can be written as L square divided by M into D. So this is how we can write it. So in this case density and resistivity they are a like constant. So what do we see? We see that R is proportional to L square by M. Now in this question R1, we have to find out the ratio of the resistances that is R1 is to R2 is to R3. So this will be equal to L1 square by M1 is to L2 square by M2 is to L3 square by M3. Correct? So this can be written as, now here when we say that masses are in this ratio, so we can say that masses of the three wires are x, 3x, 5x. Similarly, when we say that the lengths are in this ratio, we can say that the lengths of the wires are 5x, 3x and x respectively. So therefore L1 can be considered as 5x square divided by M1 is x is to L2 square can be considered as 3x whole square divided by M2 is 3x is to L3 can be considered as 1x whole square divided by M3 is 5x. So this is equal to 25 is to 3 is to 1 by 5. Now since we have 1 by 5 here in order to convert it into 1 we multiply the entire thing by 5. So this becomes 125 is to 15 is to 1 and this is the answer. So 125 is to 15 is to 1 is the correct option. Question number 14. Two wires of the same material having equal area of cross section have length L and 2L. Their respective resistances are in the ratio. So we know that resistance R 
is equal to rho L by A, right? So in this case, we have two wires, right? So let, let's say that for wire number one, it is L1, A1, R1. For wire number two, it is R2 is equal to rho L2 by A2, right? So now let's say, now since the wires are of the same material, therefore the value of resistivity remains the same. Perfect. Now L1 is equal to capital L and L2 is equal to 2L. That is given in the question. And what about A1 and A2? They have equal area of cross section. So A1 is equal to A2 is equal to A. So therefore the ratio of the resistances would be equal to L by 2L. Right? Because resistance is directly proportional to the length and in any ways area is the same for both the cases. So this is equal to 1 by 2. Therefore the ratio would be 1 is to 2. So C is the correct option. Question. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.